yeah, I went on this epic adventure, got to Cairo. I remember pushing my bicycle outside of the hotel uh, room and like, I'm like, shucks, this is the way I'm getting home. This is the way I'm going across a whole continent. And that was <laughs> the scariest moment of my life. Yeah, so I did this trip, uh, 10,526 kilometers. Um, I did it in 59 days. <laughs> yeah, on that bicycle, a second-hand Gary Fisher bicycle, and I averaged about 178 kilometers per day. And as I got through the continent, I just got quicker and quicker and quicker and better, and I, I just loved every second. So I've got seven minutes to squeeze this trip into, oh, you know, like, okay, so what I decided to do was I'm gonna dive into two countries, Sudan and Ethiopia. Those are definitely my favorite countries by far. And um, so I'm, I'm at the border of Egypt into Sudan, and the only research I've done about Sudan is that it's the least visited country in the world. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, already you're thinking to yourself, why don't people visit here? Okay. So the first thing is it's very difficult to get a visa and to get into Sudan. And the second one is because of the 9-11 um, plane crashes and you know, all the terrorist activity, the USA have got such strict bans on the country that you can't even draw money in the country. There's no, like the ATMs don't work. You've got strict bans about traveling. I know people that come into Khartoum can only travel around the city. They can't even leave the boundaries. So I mean, that's quite a, a scary thing. So I get into this country and I realize I've got no money and I can't draw money. And it's just the scariest thing ever. And I'm at a point where I'm like, this trip is gonna go very badly right about now, okay? I get to the sign about 30 k's from the border and it says Khartoum on a white pillar, 900 kilometers. And I look onto the horizon and it's just sand. It's just like desert. And I mean, I've got my bicycle, I've got my things, and off I go into the desert, the complete unknown. And the first thing I learned about Sudan is how incredible the people were. And there wasn't one night I went hungry, there wasn't one day I went without, you know, water and, and these people providing for me. The most amazing and, and humble people. And it's, it's flat, good tailwinds. If you want to go on a cycling holiday, I recommend going into the desert in Sudan. <laughs> <laughs> if you can get a visa and if you can get in. But it was just incredible. I, I loved the desert, you know, going to bed at night in my little one-man tent, you know, going to the toilet, this is the things that adventurers need to do as well. So you go to the toilet and you come back and you're just standing at your tent and you're looking at the horizon to the horizon and it's just stars and there's nobody around and you can't even hear crickets or insects or anything like that. It's just dead, dead, dead. And for me, that was incredible. You mean shouting in my tent, and there's not even an echo. And that freedom of being completely alone was awesome. So then I get into a country like Ethiopia, and I'm like, okay, cool, this, this could be fine. I've heard all the jokes about like, lack of food, and the people running after chickens, and <laughs> famine. So that's what I'm expecting. And my mind is blown when I get into Ethiopia. It's just mountains, green scenery, it's got the biggest population of cattle and animals in Africa, the whole of Africa. It's got coffee, it's got the most amazing crops, but not so much the amazing people, okay? So teenagers used to stand in the road with like all sorts of weapons. Um, kids used to stand on the side of the road and throw rocks at me, coming down these hills, spitting at you. It gets quite aggressive and you're thinking to yourself like, how, do I get, how am I gonna get through this? And then you get into the villages and you spend some time with the people there. And again, there's this, the, the older people feed you and give you water and make sure you've got something to drink. And then they've got this little coffee ceremony that they do where they, they've picked the coffee beans themselves, they roast it, they, they heat the coals and they make this pot of coffee for you in the morning. And it takes about 20 minutes, it's crazy. I mean, as South Africans get in a nice big um, cup of coffee in the morning, I know that's what I do first every single morning. And when they hand you a little like, glass of coffee like that and you drink it, and it's by far the best coffee you've ever tasted, you know, asking for a second one, realizing how much effort they went through is a bit difficult. <laughs> so yeah, Ethiopia, I remember going down the Blue Nile Gorge, 20 kilometers switchbacks, you know, and just 
you know, getting to the bottom of there, the bottom, there's, there's rebels that have been fighting over the past couple of days, trying to steal cattle from one tribe down at the bottom. It's the special forces are there, and you won't recognize the special forces, that's how special they are. They're in, like, clothing <laughs> I would wear. They don't look qualified to carry the guns that they're carrying. I mean, Africa is amazing, it's scary, it's, it just it, it gives me goosebumps to think about the country. You know, from AK-47s being pointed at your face, um, people waking you up in your tent, uh, shepherds asking you for the passport, otherwise they're gonna stab you, you know what I mean? So you're handing your passport to people that aren't qualified to even know what a passport is. <laughs> but um, that moment of getting to Cape Town was, was worth it all. I did it for a, for a charity called Operation Smile that fix uh, cleft lips and palates all over Africa. <laughs> And yeah, that's, that's got to be one of my favorite pictures. My, my shoes, my cycling shoes are there on the back of the, of the bicycle, my South African flag. I've never been proud of South Africa. We're in a beautiful country. We really are. Table Mountain in the background. And then on the left of the picture is, is one of these kids that we raised money for, for Operation Smile. And that was the bicycle on the odometer, 10,526 kilometers. It was just an incredible journey. Egypt, Sudan, Ethiopia. Uh, Kenya, Tanzania, Zambia, Botswana, and then finally home into South Africa. And um, yeah, it's just the African continent is so beautiful, and specifically um, Ethiopia and Sudan. If you ever want to travel in Africa, you've got to get to these two countries. It's really amazing, and um, I wanted to just speak specifically about those two countries. Africa impacted me greatly, and you know, that Guinness World Record, when it arrived in the post, I remember being so excited at first. And then, um, you know, looking at it, I thought to myself, this isn't, this isn't mine. And you might think this is some story of humility, but it, re it really wasn't because the name was spelled wrong. <laughs> yeah.